Hi. <laughs> Expose mobility and growth in um, And, you know, I was thinking earlier, and it's funny, well, not really, because I asked my son, how do I get more people to watch my videos? Because I'm not trying to be from these rich and famous YouTubers. I just want to be able to get my my word out about something that is near and dear to me. Um, you know, I I have a son who has special needs, so he is in his own way disabled. Um, and you, you can't see his disability. Um, and even when you talk to him, you don't know that he has a disability. And I am just so proud of the progress he made when he was a, a baby until um, now as a grown man who helps me more than I have done. Sometimes it does me too much. And he reminds me of stuff that I don't know. Uh, so I don't need to really. Well, I always worry about my kids. One year old, but it was a super life. Um, but I was thinking, um, there are YouTube videos that I watch. The Lewis told me to watch YouTube. But anyways, um, and I was inspired by some of those that I watch. There are several ones that my son William would have showed me and I just said, oh, I want to keep watching them, keep watching you know, the older boys, the interesting purpose. There's so many more that are related to those type of videos and they were helping people or they're just showing interesting things and you can learn from them and wish you were with them whatever it was going on and then i watch some of the other youtube videos that my um, son likes to watch and still i don't it's probably because i'm old i don't grasp the concept of sitting there watching other people play video games however i have i play video games i have a ps4 uh and I have a new NES retro, and I also have this all-in-one game NES that they made a few years ago. It's not the old games, people games. I do puzzles, and I like certain kinds of games. Um, that keeps my brain active, and they're fine. And I still dabble in Tetris and and beer games are the Crash Bandicoot games, but to PlayStation, so it's stuck. I will look up a video on that to see if I can like, figure out how I get past something. But that's kind of where my watching videos about people playing video games at the end. I use YouTube to try and find how to fix something, how to do something to see if something's done. Um, and, you know, I use it as a, a promotional tool for my games workshop and use because I push it for reviewer. It's not a paid gig, so it's just because I like to read and I like to help authors, um, you know, get their books out there. I have my own. But that is all separate from what this video is. I think that everyone, no matter who you are, should have a purpose in life. If you have a purpose, then even on your worst days, those can get you through 
Uh, I have several. My first purpose is to wake up every morning. Be grateful that you wake up. Excuse me. And one thing I was wanted to point out: yes, I am drinking coffee. I am wearing Sunday shirt. Uh, yes, I made myself shirts for every single day of the week. So it's kind of like a writer and then kind of the meaning why they call it Sunday and then they keep sleeping. So I have set up seven that I do something missing. And that way, I don't know what the it is. I just sound like it's a joke. It's really not. Um, and getting back to um, how I manage, like I said, you have to have. I have pains, and there are some times when I don't know how my feet can be numb and hurt and tingle at the same time. So I don't know how that works, but. Fortunately, my brain doesn't work like it's supposed to. Um, on the plus side, really, really bad headache. It makes me more than just me being creative. I've been creative since I was a child. It's great stories. Dabble a little bit of drawing. I used to do that a lot. And I can't really do crafts. When I feel to um, it gives me something to do. So there are a lot of things I can do. I can't dance. Well, I never could actually dance, but I can't dance. Anymore. I can't even share dancing. It wears me out. Sometimes forget. So now to your band, please band music, or you can call it out, or just something that as far as you want to this soundtrack. And I can do that. Forget. I'm always sitting down because I'm not falling. Um and I heard that if you make a fool of yourself, you two could really boost up your views, but that is not my purpose. <laughs> I just want to get my my word out about being disabled. And sometimes you just don't realize what someone else is going through until you've been there yourself. And it's not, everybody is an individual, so it's not exactly the same. Even if you had the same person, you could have a twin with the same exact disease and same problems, but it would still not be the same because everybody is individual. Um, some people look at you differently when you're sitting in a chair, having a dog magnet, you know, go outside and all the dogs are going to have to pet them. So I like that. Big fan of animals. So kitties. Grandfather baby hyper. He's his dog. His husband's dog. Her obsidian. He gets her baby. So we're going to She talks to me. Well, she listens to me. Really. I'm kind of sitting for my son Robert's bearded dragon Han. William and I have 25 fish. Well, I have one fish and he's got 24. And of course, we have the love on the trees. And we also have fish and Lois got these adorable little guinea pig brothers. So those are my grandbabies as well, Ray Boone and Wanton. And it's kind of interesting because that's, that's their name and maybe they got them. So um, we are a big, uh, we like our Asian food, so 
it just kind of fits in. Can't wait for the Trisha to officially be October 15th. She knows her getting married. I don't see what is it. She's going to be a person. I am my sons and her spouses. So that's pretty amazing. And I have a great support system. Maybe we brought that I can't have something from the work. And what I do for a lot of children to see how he was doing, or they don't come in and it's something from me. With the compromise and stuff of the class place, it should be in this nursing type of setting. I don't want to get anybody sick. I don't really show it myself, but I go outside and I'm around people and I don't wear a mask. I end up with So that's me. Um, it doesn't even mean that somebody had pneumonia. Um, I had bacterial pneumonia and it's <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so as of this recording, um, hopefully by the time it goes to air, I feeling much better. Um, at least I don't have a fever. I don't have to cough. I get out of breath and I get dressed. <laughs> but I'll move. Excuse me. And I think this video is one of those like great. Let's just go. And when I started it, I was thinking too full, but I was going to pop on. But I am doing some letter writing, and that is going to be a separate video when we talk about what I'm going, who I'm writing to, and why, and what the letters say. But so that's going to be probably the episode after this one, um, or it could be before that one, probably after. One of the things I wanted to mention because um, I had someone message me on the back when I first started my petition. And said that um, they were also in a wheelchair. And she told her friends to watch all of the shortcuts that she does. So if they, um, you know, as they get older, they end up in a wheelchair, they some helpful hints because just because something says it's mobility accessible does not mean it's easily accessible. Going to a door and if you're in a wheelchair or you have a walker and you have to open the door and maneuver yourself around the door, whether it's heavy or light, is accessible, but not easily accessible if you're the person trying to get in. You know what makes it accessible? Someone opening the door. But there's also those people in the business that you speak. You have those people that will open the door for you. But they open it so they're actually standing in the doorway where you need to go and they don't realize it. They should be holding the door from the outside. But even if whether they're going in or out and being sweet, and I think that's wonderful. And I've had a few people saying, Oh my God, I'm so sorry, you know, because I'm trying to get in and not hit them with my wheelchair. So, but I always, not everybody gets that. Some people will actually, they, see you walking with a walker or using a wheelchair or some type of mobility there are those people who will hurry to get in front of you of wherever you're going so you don't slow them down and then there's those people that looks like they're hurrying in front of you but it's really just so they can go for it. but usually if you walk to the supermarket automatically it's not the case they're just trying to hurry up and get it. Then you get the ones that are like, especially when you're, I'm in a mobility scooter in the middle of an aisle and I park on the side, try to be out of people's way. It's, I don't, I've had practical run, run into them. They so don't look where they're going and I do not want to damage my scooter or get hit. Bad enough in close trading. The same thing they can reach you. Yes, I live in a very bad intersection um, that the light doesn't always, the walks in doesn't always work. 
But even when it does, there are still people there like crossing over and you're trying to get across the street and they will try to speed up to get to you uh, in front of you uh, so they can go rather than having to wait three seconds for you to cross their path. Um, I've been almost hit within inches. If I didn't stop instantly, I would have been hit at least three times. Other times, people have just done it, and I was I I, I see them doing it, so I know they're going to do it. So I like stop because they keep going. There are times when I think someone is doing it, but you're just creeping until you get past them so they can move. Or they stop at the stop sign or the crosswalk, and they actually stop while they're in the crosswalk. Um, uh, because that's because they think they can hurry up and turn. But if you're walking or using some type of ability, you actually have to go around them. So you can't back up now because they are behind that. Um, so I guess this video is one of ranting and also just making reality. You don't always know it, but, you know, I find myself, I'm in a wheelchair, but I can still walk around my apartment when my legs want to work. Um, sometimes getting in and out of an entrance or an exit or leaving, I have to use my legs to help steady the door so I can maneuver my way out. Um, if I was in a wheelchair because I couldn't use my legs, um, then I would not be able to do certain things. Being just because you're disabled doesn't mean you should lose your independence. You lose some, yes. Um, in 2019, I had to stop driving, and I knew the moment I needed to stop. I was driving my car. My my son Lewis was in the passenger side. My um, my foot twitched while it was on the gas pedal, and it which so my foot stepped harder on the gas. And I am very fortunate there was no car in front of me. My reaction time sucks. So I was able to, uh, I would not, if someone was in front of me, but, and of course it would have been my fault and medical reasons. So uh, I, I made it home in peace. I looked at my son and said, this is the last one that so that's, that's my okay. I, mean, I used to not be able to drive in headache. So you're so debilitating, you can get confused. And I knew not to drive when it happens. Drove once with that, and I realized that I was I had to pull over and then propose myself to go back home, but I could have run off the road. So I knew my limitations, but um, that last one was the last time I drove. I drove home and went and sit in the secure Robert. Our car is yours now. Robert and I we got the car together. We must have it, but we got it together. But it is his. After that, he was like, you can just have to, you can do this. Um, the car is yours. I don't need any. He does. When you have uh, a debilitating disease, I have several, which kind of sucks because you always remove some. Um, so it's you make allowances and you try to figure out how you can still do certain things. So I all of my plates are um, plastic. My cups are either metal or plastic. I actually have this. It's a metal cup with a handle and a lid. 
And I have four of these, two of them I use for coffee and two of them I use for water. Those are they also have um, water mugs and all have lights in their middle. So we drop in a also thing. Um I do have scrabble things. Um yes, uh, I do find that uh, cooking on the stove when you are in a chair, not ideal because the height is off. But usually I don't do a lot of major cooking. It's usually sometimes makes things that we used to make before teach someone else how to make it. Um, I made that on power. Um, but I got a small defiler so we could use things like that often. We use this air fryer. And, uh, but there are other things. I use, these are awesome, and I like them. Or anyone who likes soup or cereal. Uh, they're the Japanese soup spoons. They're, they're really deep. Um, and we uh, can holes. I am trying to master them using plastic chopsticks for the ramen or rice noodles. Not so easy. Eating noodles is even if it's, it's like ramen or noodles, I end up taking a fork and grabbing the noodles and putting it on the spoon and then eating it that way, which makes an extra effort. But if I keep it on my fork, it's just going to fall off. The deepness of the spoon that even if I shake them, it's less likely to lose all the food in the way used to have a bit, but I hated it. It's really So we took it in a little hand towel, spill all over my shirts. I, I have a magnifier so I can read books with small print. I like using my Kindle and Kindles and Surface and computer. The font is large. Sometimes I lose my vision and I can't, I can't read. Everything gets blurry. Uh, so then I can, but then I can, I can listen to audio books on my computer and the surface read to me. Tell you, I, my son Lewis. He heard that I had wanted a Surface tablet, and I wanted it because it's kind of like a laptop, kind of like a tablet. You can still draw on it, whatever. And days that I just don't feel like getting out of bed, and I say getting out of bed, except for one time, and I, even if I don't feel well, I'm sick, I still get up and get dressed, make my bed, and then I. Use if I want to curl up, I use one of my nap blankets. Yes, I have a nap. And just kind of lay back, watch TV or some music or read or something. And I can still use my surface so I can check my email. Maybe I can a short story. I can still do all of the stuff. And I don't have to sleep. There are some things I have to use my computer for, and it's, it's just easier for me to use my computer. It's a phone or surface. I also, I am, well, me, I personally, as my phone, I have a Samsung Galaxy M10. Yeah. 
And so I have a watch that connects to that. And what I like about this one, I had one prior, but it didn't have all the features that this one has. This one has a fall detection. My phone has this app on it, Life360. So um, Lewis and Freesha, they have me. And so they can see where I am and I can see where they are. And if something happens to me, they would know exactly where I was. And also if something happened to them, I get a notification. And Lewis's dash cam actually sends me notifications if anything seems like he wants to hit a pothole and I got a notification that he hit a pothole um, from his phone or from his dash cam. Like, oh, Lewis, are you okay? He said, oh, yeah. Sometimes I've actually, and I don't know how I did it, but I sent an SOS when, on my phone when I didn't need it, and it actually texts a picture of whatever it is when you send it, uh, and a link to William Robert and Lewis Creation that something has been really help. And a lot of times that's just. But now I have this watch, so if I actually really fall, it'll check them. And I can do help from my watch. Um, I actually wear, I think, my neck. See it? It's great. Um, they're, they're for lanyards, but I have to connect to um, my phone. I made sure my little o ring in the back of it. So. No dropsies for me, and it's saved me so many times. And I actually, on the line, I have a, a stylus. The stylus that comes with the phone, it's kind of tiny and very hard. I use it a little bit fatter. And I'm always afraid I would just lose it, so I just keep it in there. And then my stylus, which basically looks like this, and a bunch of them with there's a little thing here, the placement little doohickeys. Got them on the pretty cheap. And I can just hook that, pull it out, and plug it back in. So, really, I know I have invented a dance. I'm not going to do a dance or make silly faces or do it too much. But being able to be independent or as independent as possible, um, you don't know what the future is going to bring for you. I have a 70% chance that because of my brain injury that I will have some form of dementia. Hopefully not for a very, very, very long time. But there's always a possibility that I might not. I may just have a really, really bad memory like I do now. It's it's terrible. Um, you know, people are forgetful, like they forget the keys. They go into a room and pick that room to the website. I'm the person that has put um Things in the refrigerator that don't belong in the refrigerator, put things in the sink, garbage in the sink when you should have just put it out. Um, sometimes I don't remember conversations that I've had. Um, I end up repeating myself, which drives people nuts because I can't remember if I told them. So I kind of, when I start out the conversation, I'm sorry, I don't. Remember, did I tell you this? And then this. Okay, so uh, I do re repeat stories in a, in a, as a kid, so I have been instead of saying them out loud to people because they've heard them before, I've been writing them down. So 
of the album for or a new memory or something. So I recommend that for everyone. Think of a story and you know, like, even growing up being an adult. The, it just kind of like something triggered that memory and you have no idea where it came from. Write it down. You know, because you may not remember it later on. And sometimes memories are worth sharing other times that's so <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's so memory. That's uh, kind of. I'm. I used to be running around on kids and playing in the yard when they were little, uh, dealing with being a, a single parent and having children with special needs. They all need attention from their mom, and their mom needs to be their mom and their dad. I commend all single parents, whether you have one child or a hundred. You know, it is not an easy thing to have to do. Um, but sometimes you Maybe I should have done this more, or should have done it. But then I see how the boys that I raised turned into these wonderful men, and they could have went the other way by blaming you know, their terrible childhood with their father uh, as. You know, an excuse to do bad things, but instead, um, many times they just became these great men because they were they they did by seeing. You know, you could teach like my boys were because I said thank you because I said you're welcome because I'm going to the door for somebody. Without even thinking about it, when your kind and your children see that, they do it. They don't need to say, you know, my kids were never like, you know, somebody give gives them something. I don't have to say, hey, say thank you. They just did it because they knew that's what their mom did. They kids were always so certain they were very late. So even if they was being they were really polite about it, they would admit it and they were very polite about admitting it and saying so I am very proud of this. And when I do wish we do this of your mommy, they were like, You helped us, you raised us, you helped us, so we're never helping you. And that area feels like me. I know how to need to take it. Okay. How it feels to this brain pain. Still, I grief. Losing my grandmother a few years ago. Seeing my other grandmother. In a way, I lost my relationship with my dad, who he was, as who he is now, is not who he was. And I miss that. So, no matter what happens to you in life, there are ways to push through. It is not always easy. Sometimes it hurts so bad whether it's in here or in here or your whole body or parts of your body it's in so much pain that you just wish it would stop. Just think about your life. What is your purpose? Just to be honest, the meaning of life is life and how you live it. And if you have a purpose and mission reason for getting up every morning and thanking 
whoever you believe in, whatever faith you have, for being able to rise, eventually sit up and get out of bed, then it's another it's another one you would change. I my goal is to help not just myself but others be able to get in and out of places and lose some of their independence because it's bad enough a lot of it has been stricken. There are some days where you just think I'm mm -hmm. and something tells you if you're in the butt says it, get out of bed. Even if you're whatever for whatever reason. Or if you are bedridden and you just laying there, wake up. So you know, maybe there's somebody who will visit you. Somebody who will read you. Or you could, if you're able to read yourself, or choice shows. Watch your favorite TV shows. I, I have a DVD collection of TV shows. I, I still do. Um, is there not always that true? Anyway, uh, thank you for listening to this video of the rants and graves and ways to give your life something. And I mean, be bald and mind and I may be in a wind journey to time and I may sing badly and I can't dance and I tell terrible jokes like they say those bad dad jokes bad dad jokes especially and sometimes being silly doesn't matter how old you are. It can be enjoyable, especially when it makes you feel Like the whole world knows that I just told you a terrible joke. Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Um, and uh, share it, share videos. Um, I would like to hear from people. I'd like to get more voices for um, my purpose, which is to give all persons access to public facilities, both federal, governmental, and you know, just public buildings, stores. Mom and pop shops, convenience stores, being able to get go to the, get gas or you know anything access doctors' offices definitely should have a way to get in of a building, especially if you mobility impaired. So this is for all those people who. Who need help getting in and out? It's not easy. And sometimes I just don't have the strength. Sometimes I ask my son to come to go get a package or something just because I want it might be too heavy. Too, just because I need something to do for me. I just don't have the energy to do it. And some people, they don't have the use of their own children or their legs. They can't use those as tools to maneuver. As I said before, just because something is accessible or you can use it doesn't necessarily mean it's easily accessible. I mean, I can use a plate, but if it's glass and I'm holding it, I'm going to drop it and it's going to break. So that's why I do plastic. And then I have plastic bowls. And I eat spaghetti in a bowl. A lot of my foods I will put into a bowl. And sometimes I eat like a little kid. I'll stop and see
or stirring things spaghetti to be a bit serious. But hey, I like peanut butter on an egg sandwich. Anyway, again, this has been Amy Shannon for Exposed, Mobility Access Denied. And it's also, when, the, when I say denied, they're also denying your right, your God-given right, to be as independent as you possibly can. So thank you for watching. Until next time. Thank you.